Okay, um, well, I'm doing a video quickly, hopefully quickly, as quick as I can, uh, on the Holy Word of God and the believer's final authority, and a bit of my testimony of the King James, and why I only use really a King James, and I don't trust any other any of the other Bibles. This is my new King James. It's not the new King James. This is just a King James 1611 and uh, I've looked at the new King James and examined it and it's from the Alexandrian text which is uh, the Roman Catholic corrupted versions and they all are so I'm going to share a bucket load of scriptures um, hopefully for people who may be confused about which Bible issue coming up behind who are you know learning and gaining the testimony of, of the Word of God and and it and and its authority and, it, and, and how the Lord's preserved it um, just want to it's kind of like when you go up a trail and perhaps you um, find an obstacle in the way or you've got you've got people walking behind you and you come across a branch or some brambles and you you hold it back and so I was I'm gonna get whacked in the face or trip up or, or whatever the obstacle is to remove it. So this is really my heart and why I want to share this and and perhaps to refresh people who, who are already strong in the faith and have a testimony. Um so this is a bit of a bit of my testimony because I really I came across this. I was my first Bible was a King James, and I'd never really um, diverted from a King James. And then I saw all this war going on about which version, and people attacking people for being a King James believer. So that's what I want to share. Um, just want to remind people that um, it's the Holy Spirit which teaches us. And so it's everyone's responsibility to, you know, test what brothers say or what teachers claim to be teaching the word of God say. So I'm going to read some scriptures and allow the Holy Spirit to teach us. So anyone seeking the edification and answers, I've put down all the scriptures that have, have helped me in the past and built my faith up and strengthened my conviction that this is a believer's final authority and you can trust it it doesn't hold me up it i don't hold it up it holds me up uh, the lord has put me on the rock i haven't climbed up on the rock myself it, except like every other believer i put my faith and trust and uh called upon the lord and he saved me and uh the first bible i I had was the King James and when you consider um, not so long ago the only Bible really was the King James there wasn't all these new versions you've got a question well why why do we need other Bibles and all the debate and confusion that goes on and which is the best translation and you get all this intellectual argument about the, the Greek the, you know all, all the Greek translation and all the educated college professors you know saying oh no it means this well if god can't preserve his word you know that that's a mark on god that you, that that's rubbish you know god knows what he's doing and i'm going to read some scriptures where it, which shows that he's faithful and he's preserved this word and it came forth through many translations of the faithful text and what we ended up with was this the final version and he put his finger on the table and said this is the one this is this is the standard this is the uh, authorized version it's even called the authorized version now now that's not man boasting that's god fearing man who had a testimony of jesus christ and done this by the grace of god and brought forth this precious wonderful book so I'm going to read some scriptures. Um, Psalm 12. I'm going to read the whole lot. 
Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of man. Now, I think that's quite relevant for today. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbour, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things, who have said, with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own, who is Lord over us. So that shows us sort of like the intellectual boast, boastfulness of what's in a man's heart, what's in an intellectual, egotistical man's heart. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words a silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them for this generation for ever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are ex uh, exalted. So the Lord's promise there, he preserve his word forever. Here it is. Uh, no man, no man can remove this book. You know, it's faithful, it's a faithful standard. If you think of uh, weights and measures, you, you have to have a standard weight to, to test all the other weights, to calibrate all the other weights from a standard weight. So someone had to, in time, say, oh, this is an ounce, this is a pound, this is a gram, this is, you know, whatever the weight or measure is, it, you know, whatever system is used, you've got to have a standard, a lawful standard that you can check all the other weights with. This is the standard. With this standard, you can measure all things accurately because it's God is faithful. The Lord Jesus Christ is faithful and he's preserved this book. I'm going to read some other scriptures that um, testify and clarify. Now, Isaiah, uh, chapter 40, verse 8. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our Lord, uh, the word of our God, shall stand forever. Um, let's go to Psalm, chapter 19. Verse 7, uh, one, one. the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Uh, let's go to Psalm 138. Verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. You consider this uh, in the scriptures, it says that the Lord Jesus Christ is a word and God has put his word above every other name. Now the Lord the Lord testified that he's put his written word above every other name. So when you consider this, this that, that's a very gracious thing and, uh, and a true thing to do because this is the most important thing for a believer. This is, this is a rock. This is the Lord's faithful promise. He's put his word. The Father's put his Son above every other name. And his son is his word. This is the word of God. And it's the most sacred, precious book on this planet. It is the book. It's called the book. It's faithful. Like the Lord Jesus Christ is faithful. Now God doesn't lie. You cannot I you cannot ever doubt the authority of scripture. It, if you do, it's because you're wavering and you're confused and the enemy's getting at you. 
and so I'd like to just encourage people to, if they haven't got a testimony of the King James, is to to seek what the will of the Lord is. Don't don't trust what people say. Get a testimony of the King James. Right, because if we if we cannot trust, because if you if you get caught out by that, oh, which of you know you change Bibles and start believing other people's opinion. You're, you start to slip and slide, you're on a slippery slope because you're starting to doubt, you're starting to di unbelieve what the truth is and now that it, it's either the truth or it isn't. So when you get into all the, all the other left and right, all the other debate, you're starting to put your faith in, in others' opinion and, not, and not, not the word of God and, and, and you need to trust the Lord and seek his will, seek what his word says. So I'm going to read out some more scriptures to sort of clarify and edify. Um, I've, write, I've, I've, write, I've wrote a list of uh, scriptures that are really helpful to me and to any believer. Second uh, Corinthians because I, 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 I never really doubted my, my, the version I chose. But when I come across all this uh, debate, which I'd never come across before, I started to question. I thought, well, it, you know, I wavered a bit. And then it brought me straight back. After examination, it brought me straight back to my King James. And I brought an NIV uh, um, to have a look. I didn't like it at all, and then I discovered that there's whole chapters missing, there's the words have changed, and then you do some further examination to the, the different texts, the faithful text and the corrupt text, there's only two, two real branches, two trees of, of te uh, text, and uh, all the modern Bibles are from the corrupt text, and, and as I said before, you know, Years ago, all, the only Bible in existence was was from that faithful text, which is where we have now. It's all standardised in the King James, and that and that's for the whole world. This is a a lawful book in, in Great Britain. That's a lawful book. That's a copyright free. Nobody owns this book. It's free. The King, by law, gave this as a free gift to be read in all meeting houses. Or, or another way you can put it, for the public's benefit, because all, all the scriptures were in Latin and, and people were uneducated, they were starved, they, didn't, they were kept down, so the churches could own authority over what the scriptures taught and they, and they could teach whatever they liked and, um, and misuse their authority. Well, the authority was given to any believer by law. So this is not only a lawful book, it's preserved by our law. It's also preserved by the hand of God and, and given to every single man, woman, woman and child as their final authority from, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 2 and 3. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So, um... Verse 2, so we've been espoused to one husband, we've been married by, by believing, we've been married to, to Christ, he's, he, he's the husband, he's the head of the church. Um, in verse 8 it says, uh, I robbed other churches taking wages of them to do you service, that's Paul speaking, so the Apostle Paul was commissioned to teach the word, he had the authority, he was the first one to receive the fullness and, and the full authority 
and the fellowship of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And he, um, along with all the other apostles, and, and he said he's robbed other churches of their wages. He's made them redundant to do us a service, to do the Lord Jesus Christ a service and give us this faithful book, to give us a testimony and preserve the gospel. The two go hand in hand. If you take this away, you, you can interpret it any, any way you like. You're going to get into all this confusion and intellectual bait. Um, debate, but it's been nailed like a shelf on the wall. It, 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 you can't adjust it, it's fixed, it's the rock. So, um, let's go to John, 1st John. <coughs> First John uh, chapter two verse twenty seven. Uh, I'll do twenty five, twenty six, and twenty seven. And this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them, them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of Him abideth in you, and you you need not that any man teach you but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is and is truth and is no lie and even as it have taught you you shall abide in him so every believer has been anointed that means given the holy spirit of truth given being sealed and you don't need any man to teach you 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 have you have the word of God, you have the faithful word of God given to you in writing and in spirit and in truth. Right, let me just confirm that which I am saying. Ephesians chapter 4. Especially if you were like me, you really, you know, really struggled with confidence. This really, you know, discovering these things was a wonderful blessing. It really built me up, and I, I, I didn't do it all alone. That's um, other people, other brethren, who have gone before us and who are on the earth today, who follow after those elders, who follow after Christ and the faithfulness of the word. Um, learning from them, I didn't didn't learn. Was taught by them. I was taught by the Holy Spirit, and what they were teaching confirmed what the Holy Spirit had already taught me, and was teaching me. And so it's it's a case of two things: you can learn that which you've been taught, and it confirms what has been taught. Um, I, like, I kind of likened it into I received the word when I was saved. I received the whole of this word in my heart and my soul. But I didn't didn't fully understand it all. I needed the word to, to learn what it is I'd received. And that's what the word is. It's that standard of what we have received, that faithful promise, which is, which is Christ. Ephesians 4, chapter 30. Um, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Uh, let's go. John 7. Thirty-nine. Uh, I'll do thirty-eight and thirty-nine. He that believe on me, as the Scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So this is speaking of the promise of the Holy Ghost going to be given. But first, Christ had to go through his 
death, burial and resurrection and, and he faithfully promised he would send the comforter which is the Holy Spirit, which is a testimony received by the faithful. Um, let's go to John. So this is the best before the promise, and this is the faithful promise that came and has been given. It's in uh, John chapter 14, uh, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you of all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. I beg your pardon, that again is a promise of the Holy Spirit. Um, so after we've been, um, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, you, you you know, you, that's what you have received. You've received the Holy Ghost. You've received the Word of God. Um, let's go some other scriptures. Well, the, the, uh, now, this, these scriptures I've chosen um, just clarify, you know, what the authority of the Word, what what we have received, what we have been given. Which is, which is emboldens you and builds you up. Once you trust it and put your faith in it, it will build you up even further. Um, let's go to Second Timothy. Second uh, Timothy chapter four. verse 2 um, preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine so how can you do that unless you've received the word and you've been given the authority to do that there's the authority right there preach the word be instant in season out of season and reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Hebrews chapter 4, scripture with the scripture. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing either the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God it is truth. It, it, it reveals what the Lord Jesus Christ revealed about men's hearts, what's in men's hearts, and it will tell, it will discern from studying the word and trusting in the word, it will sharpen your discernment up into where people are coming from, what's in their hearts, and uh, it's sharper than the two-edged sword. Um, it cuts, cuts through, it convicts, it divides, it heals, and it testifies of the truth. It re reaffirms the truth in the Word of God. Uh, go back to Timothy, Second Timothy. I get all muddled, my book, where the scriptures are. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse uh, 14 to 17 But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing them whom thou hast learned them and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture 
is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, God is a God of wisdom and order, and although we, we receive the word, we receive the fullness, we receive that promise, we don't understand that, and we have to learn, and we have to grow, and that's why we've got this book. You, now, when I was saved, I, 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 I didn't know any of this. I was completely in the wilderness. Um, I kind of like I kind of liken it to uh, world, you know, uh, World War Two. Um, about uh, I remember reading the uh, history of the, the the American paratroopers and the realities of of what war's like and. On, in documentaries and films, you only you you only really see uh, the glory and, and you see the sadness, but you don't really see the dark things that that go that that, that happened that were unseen and they weren't reported. And um, I, I was reading these testimonies from soldiers, you know, t accounting things that what it was really like. Now, the American Air First, I think it's the 101st Airborne, uh, in the D-Day landings to reinforce the landings and take out the, the defence systems of the Germans. Now, they landed in pitch black and, uh, you know, the people, pe you know, they were shooting each other out of fear. You know, some rookie soldiers were panicking and people got knifed you know people even the on the german side all the confusion and um even people holding grudges to other people were right when i when i get on the theater of war i'm going to let him have it and this this was like blue on blue this was americans on americans now they don't they don't really cover like that and um these men were all scattered they didn't land where they were supposed to and you know things went belly up you know nothing really goes to plan and um so i, I kind of like that to being saved you you're on your own you land in the, the the night with your kit now all all it was a famous thing that they had this extra kit bag on on their leg on the rope and when they jumped out the airplane and the power from the, they call it the prop blast, the, you know, the, the gushing of the, the air being forced through the pillar blew this, um, their kit bags off their legs and they lost their kit. They didn't, you know, they had to get on, gather themselves on the ground. They lost their weapons, they lost their maps. They, so you, you can kind of imagine the confusion and that's a bit like uh, for a saint, you know, you... Uh, there was no elders. I didn't. There was no internet when I was saved. I, I didn't know where to turn, and I, you know, I, t I had the Lord, but, the, but waiting on the grounds, the enemy, Satan, and I. I was kind of hijacked and kidnapped, and I didn't really have a strong testimony of 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 a Bible of a word. So I kind of liken it to, you know that scenario and also the Rome the Roman army they were quite um, like a tight unit and anyone that they didn't like got the sword in the back you know on the battlefield now that's a bit like that you can you can understand that in some regard but um, it is a battle you know you can you can get smacked in the face by your own brother or sister you know it, because um there's a lot of bad examples and, and you can look up to people to follow them and you follow their poor example uh, you know it might be temporary but you are swayed you are affected by what people are teaching people come forth and you know like when you're young and you're naive, you think they know what they're talking about. You put your trust in these people and you can get 
you can get led astray and that's what that's what taught me to trust in the lord and trust in his word uh, and not trust in men um and that built me up you know that all those experiences uh, increase my testimony uh, right, let's go to philippians Philippians 1, chapter 1, 14. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So, um, really, that's another thing. So when I did start putting my trust, it emboldened me to open my mouth and share and, and gain a greater understanding of the message of salvation and what... So it's a bit bit of milk before meat I had to learn these things before I could open my mouth really and understand you know I, there's lots of things I I understood because I was learning I had a testimony but it wasn't until I really studied the word through that I was really able to be more effective and and I had to learn you know that the order of, of the Lord is that you, you've got to learn really before you can act Otherwise, you're, you, if you're being tossed around, you can just uh, affect others with that, with your um, opinions. Um, let's go to First Peter. So, as a new believer, you have to pass through these things, and, and there's a, a wise reason for that. Uh, Right, first Peter chapter one, verse seven. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom though not ye see him not, although now ye see him not, Yet believing, ye rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So we receive um, our salvation at the first, but we don't we don't realise our salvation until we actually see the Lord Jesus and, and then we won't be living by faith anymore but we, we live by faith and it's it's the wisdom in, in applying our faith applying our faith and trust in the word that will bring us to the high prize like Paul said he considers all things done and done until he receives that um, the high prize of the salvation in Jesus Christ uh, his appearing at the rapture, at the, the, the taking up of the bride to be with the Lord in the air. That that's when our faith is is realised, and we'll be known as He knows us. We'll be, we will, you know, we'll be put off this our corrupted our corrupted flesh and put on um, incorruption because we will know the Lord and we will. We'll be able to see how he sees us, and we'll be able to see him and everyone else, and and it will be glorious. Um, where should we go? Right, Ephesians four. So there's wisdom in these trials, in all this confusion, in these battles that we pass through. Once we've landed on the ground and we start to establish ourselves and get our bearings and apply our faith we're gonna we're gonna come across these things like I did all these different debates all the the rapture the which bible version uh, eternal security can you lose your salvation now 
the, the Lord has all the answers. All the answers are in here to be sought for. And you don't need anyone to teach you what the answer is. is, is because if you have a testimony in the Word, you, you're going to turn to the Word for your final authority. You're not, you're not going to need teachers. Although we have teachers and we need teachers to teach what's being taught, we don't need teachers to be taught ourselves what is being taught because we have the Word of God and we have a testimony and the sure hope of that word given to us for free. Um, Ephesians chapter 4. Fourteen, um, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slayer of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ so amongst the amongst the world and amongst the body all the all all these confusions and divisions are being planted that somebody's putting the idea oh what about this you know the bible isn't true now these are unbelievers these are wicked people that are putting these ideas out there and some christians will go with those ideas and hold them up as authoritative and it it will cause camps and divisions and you get one on the left side and one on the right but the word of god plows straight through it like a knife it cuts it through the the, the, the you know broad is the way straight and narrow is is the truth is the, the the word of god and um we got we have to pass through these confusions but there's a promise that we'll be no more tossed to and fro because in, in our growth we're we're growing up to become elders like the elders like paul you know to be to be a full stature as uh, not as not not in place of christ but to be fully what the lord intends us to be to to grow up to that full stature of what of the promise given us at the first so we start like infants and we start we're in the nursery and then we then we develop into primary then we go into the juniors and then the seniors and then we become mature and we and we become an elder i'm not saying we're going to be as mighty as paul or some of the the greats in history but we're going to come to a full knowledge of um, an understanding of the scriptures and and we you don't you never stop learning and never stop growing and we won't reach that fullness until we're we're we're, we're before the lord um so this is uh, i'm going to share one scripture that really emboldened me even further this is just such a a wonderful powerful scripture to confirm what what your authority is what you've been given as a believer and, and the power that the lord's graced you with um it's in psalm 149 i'll read it all um praise ye the lord sing unto the lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints which is the ch congregation is the church body let israel rejoice in him that made him let the children of zion be joyful in their king so that's 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 two two groups of believers there the saints which is the church age and and israel which is will be which is the past and also where it's more more to come for the tribulation saints in jacob's trouble when they when they realize that and they get a testimony of christ let israel rejoice in him that made him let the children of zion be jo joyful in their king now zion is jerusalem so that's the children in israel the children in jerusalem be joyful in their king and we are we are zion we're in the body of christ we are that zion to come with christ we will 
um, I think it's Zechariah chapter 14 and uh, I think the Thessalonians uh, there's a promise that all the saints will come back with Christ all the church saints and all the saints previous up until that age will come back with Christ in the second coming and you know um, we will be we will be part of that Zion in the in the Lord's millennial kingdom. He will reign from Jerusalem for a thousand years. That will be Zion, um, and it says in I think it's Jan, Daniel chapter nine, or I'm not sure, but it, the Lord will build up Zion without hands, and um, so Zion is is the Lord's kingdom. That like Zion in the past was King David's holy city, where he fortified it, and and everyone in that city lived righteously. They lived the law, and it was it was it was termed Zion, and that's what the uh, the, the Jews are hoping and longing to come. Um, let me continue. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the tremble and harp. For the Lord take pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. The meek just simply means the humble and honest and sincere. Um, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let him let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Well, there's the two-edged sword. That's our two-edged sword. To execute vengeance upon the heathen. Now, the heathen is just a term for a, an animalistic, lawless person, a lawless body of people. So that's anyone without... without um, without the law um, and punishments upon the people so to execute vengeance upon the heathen the lawless and punishments on the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written this honour have all the saints praise ye the Lord so there's a confirming and Excuse me. Another confirming word that we have the authority to, you know, to bind to bind kings with um, nobles and with kings and nobles and their nobles with fetters of iron, so we can chain them up. We can shut them up with the word of God um, to execute vengeance upon the world. You know, we can we can uh, rebuke. We can exhort. We we've been given that authority to thrash, you know, the wicked, the unbelieving, with the word of God to bring them to repentance and then to offer them the um, the gospel, you know, of salvation. Right. So I'm going to share some more scriptures, which which I. I just want to re, you know, reinforce to uh, embolden people how I was emboldened by, just simply through study. Um, Matthew five thirty seven. But let your commu commu your communication be yea yea and nay nay, for whatsoever more than this cometh of evil. So. Now, I would interpret that as your yes be yes. If you know something, say so. You know, like, uh, uh, affirmingly, assertively, yes, I know that. I have a testimony of that. Therefore, say it, stick to it, and nay, nay. Oh, no, it's the opposite. I don't know that. I'm not sure about that. That's quite simple. Yes, yay, yay, nay, nay. Um, additionally... Second Corinthians, um, Second Corinthians one seventeen. When I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness or the things that I purpose? Do I purpose according to the flesh that with me there should be yea yea and nay nay? But as Second uh, Corinthians one eighteen. Uh, but as God is true, our word towards you was not yea and nay. 
2 Corinthians verse 19, For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among us, among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. So that's given us the authority from Christ, is yea, is yes. And, and for us it's yea, yea, and no, no, because we're learning. But in Christ it's yes. In the word it's positively true. That's, that's, that's how I would interpret that scripture. Um, some scriptures just to clarify that Christ is the word. He is the living word. Uh, this is the written word. This is like living water. Christ is that living water. His is living water preserved. A bit like ice, I suppose. You've got water, steam and ice. This is like the preservation of his living water. It's faithful and it's, it, it's the word of God. Um, John, verse, John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Uh, Ephesians 6. Um, Chap, uh, verse 17 and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God so it's a spiritual book so that's encouraging us to take the helmet of our salvation take the helmet of salvation that's trust in our salvation to know we are saved to know we have that sure hope and that anchor and that comes from the sealing of the Holy Spirit and the continuing of faith, being faithful to the word of God and trusting in that hope that's gone before us. Um, 1 John 2 uh, verse 5 But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected, hereby that that we that uh, we know that we are in him. So when we trust the word and we keep if the word, we do what the word teaches us. Um, we know that uh, we know that we, we are in him and we have the love of God. Um, and here's uh, probably the most. Uh, telling scripture that Christ is the word, you know, he is the living word. Um, Revelation uh, 19, verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. This is about his second, uh, talking of his second appearing, his second return. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of God above every other name so this book is above every other name this book is jesus christ this is a testimony of the living god you know the son of god uh, sent by the father in the father with the father uh, colossians 2 chapter 9 he had the fullness of the godhead bodily he gave us the word and a faithful promise and he gave he gave the elders the the apostles that rock that word and he is that rock and the apostles are the pillar on that rock and then we we are the lively stones on top of that we have the same authority as paul the apostle we're not apostles but we're all you know we have you know we're all elders today there's only elders uh, breath, the brethren the those who have matured and and teach and, and approved and they're approved elders and that those who we follow after we don't trust and follow after their flesh we follow after who there's who they are following after and, and we're just as equal we are all, we're one in Christ Jesus and the, the word is faithful so I'm hoping that anyone um, struggling or doubting the word of God will consider those scriptures and, and search out don't trust what I say 
trust the word of God. It's a, that I have a testimony that it's faithful, and that's only through faith and believing and continuing to trust in the word and study the word. I've been guilty in the past of neglecting the word, and you know I'm a, I procrastinate. I, I struggle to read the script scriptures so it's been a great blessing to find other brothers who share their testimony of the word and that's that's helped me to study um my brain's like scrambled eggs my uh my constant my head's like a sieve i can't remember things very well i can recall what i've learned but i can't always go back to where like the the, the chapter and verse, I, you know, my brain is not capable of that. So I've had to rely on other, other, other studies, other brothers studying, and to trust in the word, not to trust in what they teach, but to measure what they teach. And um, I know every time I go to the the word, I am fed, I am comforted, I am corrected, I'm strengthened and blessed. And I just hope and pray that if you're struggling and you've come across this video, that this has been helpful to you. And, I, and, and I've perhaps served the Lord in holding that branch back for you to, to pass through on your way, in, in your faith, in the word. And I, any obstacles in your path, you will gain that testimony that the word, the word has free course. It's cut straight through to the end. And the end is in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to leave that there in his name. Amen.